Hey everybody, Mr. Brewer, Fish, Bucks, and Bullets, back with another video for you here today. I uh, wanted to show you my newest hunting rifle that I've purchased. Um, I've been wanting a lighter, handier 308 for quite a while now. I purchased a 308. It's a Savage 110 Predator um, a year or two ago, and it shoots really, really good. But it's very, very heavy. It's got the bull barrel and... Um, the AccuFit stock on it and a pretty large scope on it. It shoots really, really well, like half inch groups with a couple different types of ammo, but it's really unwieldy and front heavy. So I've been looking for a while for a 308 that's a lot lighter and handier to shoot and to pack around in the woods. And I've got a couple of Ruger M77 Hawkeyes. One is in the 243 that I've had since uh, my teens. Uh, so I've had it for a long time. and. Um, I have a 7mm 08, which I got maybe 5 to 10 years ago. And um, I keep coming back to the Ruger M77 Hawkeye. Um, they're great rifles. They're built like tanks. I've hunted in Western Oregon in the rain, in the brush, for many years with uh, each of my rifles, and they just hold up really well. And so I went back to the M77 again for my 308. Um, and so here it is. This is the newer M77 Hawkeye Hunter. And as you can see, this has got a stainless steel action and barrel on it. Just give you a quick look here. And the overall length of this rifle is 40 inches and it's got a 20 inch barrel and it's threaded. The threading on the barrel is 5.8 by 24. It's got a 4 plus 1 capacity, so 4 down into the um, internal magazine and 1 in the chamber. And the twist rate on the barrel is 1 in 10, so it can shoot the heavier projectiles pretty well. So The rifling in the barrel is the 5R rifling. So as I understand it, that means that the grooves are not across from each other, you know, at a 90 degree angle or whatever, or 180 degree angle they're offset so that the barrel, the bullet as it travels down the barrel, spins more freely, I believe. It makes sense to me that it would be a better rifling type. Um, and based on the accuracy I got out of it, I'm, I'm becoming a, a fan of it. So it's nice and light and handy. It weighs seven pounds. The thread uh, protector that came on the rifle has a flat, uh, two flat sides that are very helpful to, if it gets too tight on there, to get the barrel protect, the thread protector off. However, I didn't like the aesthetic look of that, so I ordered a cheap piece. I think it was off of Amazon or eBay, I'm not sure which. It's just a thread protector that's nice and around. Um, and I haven't had any trouble getting it on and off the rifle, and I just think it looks a lot better. Fits on there really good. It's a little bit flared at the end, so if you wanted to run a can on it, um, that would work pretty well, I think. Uh, so again, it's stainless steel, so in Western Oregon, that'll be really helpful with uh, weather, hunting in the rain. I always wipe down my rifles and oil them up a little bit when I get back from hunting anyway, but um, with a stainless steel, it should be a little bit less worry about um, things rusting up. The rifle came with uh, this Picatinny rail installed on it, which when I went to mount this scope, I went ahead and uh, loosened it up. It was already really loose, so I'm glad that I, I took it off, put some Loctite on it, and uh, re-tightened it down. And I was a little disappointed that this particular rifle, I, I ordered it from Midway, it did not come with the Ruger rings, which I really tend to like. I know they're not perfect, but um, it didn't come, give me that option unless I went, and so I started looking and trying to find some rings to put on it and I decided to just go with the, the Picatinny rail and order some rings that would fit on the Picatinny rail. So I did that and I'm actually really happy with it. I ordered some worn rings. They've got the four um, screws on the top and they're nice and solid. On top I, I mounted this uh, loophole. It's a 2 to 7 by 33 VX Freedom. 
Um, being a lightweight, handy rifle, I didn't want to go too big. I could have probably gone with a 3 to 9 by 40 but I decided to just go with this really light scope that I had that I had purchased for my Mini 30, Ruger Mini 30, but it didn't work out very well because the cartridges were slamming. The empty cartridges, when they were ejecting, were hitting the scope. So I got a couple nicks on the scope from that, but I went ahead and took it off of that and figured I'll just put it on here. Um, and I think it looks really good and it's, it's with the total weight as you see it right now it's uh, seven pounds 15 ounces um, it's got the uh, hinge floor plate and I did have one uh, complaint about the hinge floor plate on this up here in this section where the joint is it's kind of loose so when I was handling the rifle it was making noise it was popping back and forth so I wasn't very happy about that. There's probably a good way to resolve that, but for now what I did was I put some some tape in there and uh, that stopped it from rattling around. Sorry, that was my my ring, but the, the fl hinge floor, floor plate no longer rattles around. And I can open it up um, and I think the tape stays where it needs to be, but it's not a permanent solution. But yeah, it's got the hinge floor plate for easy uh, unloading. And uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's working so far as far as a temporary solution for that issue. The only other minor complaint I have is the fit and finish is pretty good, but there's a little bit of gap back here. Um, as you can probably see, it's about a, maybe a 16th inch gap. And a little, uh, little dent on the back of that metal. Very, very minor aesthetic issue, I think. Um, and of course, it's a walnut stock, um, or walnut color anyway. I'm pretty sure it's walnut. And the stock is actually free-floated really nicely, and it's centered up nicely. Hopefully you can see that okay. So, I was happy with that. Because it's, again, uh, aesthetics are pretty important for me. Um, I like my gun to look good, and when the stock is uh, touching the barrel, it just looks like poor quality, and I just don't like the look of it. So I'm happy that the, this turned out good, and, you know, ordering stuff online, uh, online you just never know what it's going to look like when you actually get it. So um, I'm very happy with the quality of what I've got. It's not 100% perfect, but um, so far I'm really happy with it. And then... Traditional uh, Ruger uh, butt pads are not very soft. This is decently, I mean, it's not super hard yet, but I think it'll harden up as I start hunting with it. But it, it offers very little in the way of recoil mitigation. But it looks really nice, that red rubber on there with the black spacer. So, give you another look at this. Of course, the trigger guard is stainless steel metal, or uh, stainless steel and not some type of a plastic. It's got the two uh, swivel studs for your sling. So I had measured the trigger weight. It was about, on average, about four pounds. Um, I can do a short maybe on that. And so look for a short from me where I'm measuring the pull trigger pull weight on this. And last, Last uh, M77 Hawkeye that I bought was the 7 millimeter weight, you know, 5 to 10 years ago. When I first got it, the bolt was pretty, was not smooth. It was, you could definitely feel some resistance and drag and grit. And this one was kind of the same, but not as bad. But with my 7 millimeter weight, it's pretty dang smooth now. So it, it breaks in really nice, and I think that that's pretty common for these M77 Hawkeyes. Um, but I, it's a little clunky sounding, but it's not, it's pretty smooth. Um, I'm gonna make sure that it's empty, of course. And I'll pull the trigger for you here just for demonstration purposes. Of course, you have to have the safety completely off. <laughs> so it's pretty smooth and no over travel. Um, Pretty good trigger, as I, I've come to expect from these Ruger M77s. And there's a little bit of a hard bolt lift, um, which I think is not too abnormal. But And of course, it's got the 350, three position safety, um, Mauser type action, three position safety. 
that's about the extent of just the overview of the rifle itself. Uh, again, it's really handy. Oh, 13 and a half inch length of pull, but it's a very handy light little rifle. But anyway, let me show you some uh, targets from my first range trip and I am extremely happy with the accuracy that I've gotten out of this. So stay tuned for just a minute here. All right, here's the uh, first target. This was the side end target and this was at 50 yards. So I had bore sighted it myself using one of those laser bore sighters that basically the shape of a cartridge that you put into the chamber and then it points the laser down the barrel. And my first couple shots were way just off the paper here. I made an adjustment to the right and then ended up with this shot. So I, I called this my first side end shot uh, once I was on paper. Um, and that was with uh, just the Eggman 147 grain full metal jacket. Um, and so from there, what I did was I left my, I, I repositioned my crosshairs on the center of the bullseye. And then it, while holding my scope still, I adjusted my sights, the crosshair up to where this, this hole was. And then my second shot on paper with the Eggman was here in the bullseye. So that was a quick, fast way to get uh, sighted in. From that point, I switched to the normal bond strike and shot these three shots here in the center. And then I had a flyer, which was totally my fault, which went down here. And so again, this was at um, 50 yards. And so I was really happy with having uh, a 0 0.60 inch group at 50 yards with a normal bond strike to get started off here. And then I switched over to Federal Fusion. I had some 165 grain 308 Winchester with me. Um, first two shots, I believe, were right together. And then I had the flyer up and to the right. And so this one turned out to be a 0.89 inch group at 50 yards, which is not that great. The next type of ammo I have is shooting excellently out of this rifle, which is the Federal Terminal Ascent 175 grain 308. And so I only took five rounds of it with me, unfortunately, but at 50 yards, I just wanted to see what it was doing. So I shot these two, which are basically touching um, with the terminal ascent. And so I went out to 100 yards at that point. And I, I obviously let the, I let the gun cool down, barrel cool down. And I shot this group, uh, first group at 100 yards with a terminal ascent, 175 grain, 308, and that's a, point, a 0 0.58 inch three shot group. So basically almost a clover leaf is what I would call it, but that's an excellent group and one of the best groups I've shot myself with any rifle at 100 yards. Um, again, this is only a seven power scope, so I think if I had a higher power scope, it would shoot better, but I'm, I'm happy with getting this type of a group with a seven power scope for sure. And so that's excellent. Um, it's obviously a little to the right, but that can be adjusted. Um, I did some more shooting on another target. So I was trying to get about two inches high. I think I thought I was higher than I actually was here from the center. I wanted to be about um, somewhere in this area, but I was up here. I shot four shots in that in that group, which is a four shot group that measures. 0.66 inches. The main thing I was I wanted to show you how tight this group was at 100 yards with the normal bond strike as well. So I was very happy with that. And then I shot, after making some more adjustments, I shot this gr group with the normal bond strike, uh, which measured 1.06 inches. So kind of a little bit of a messy target. And so I probably didn't let it cool down as much as I should have too in between shots. But finally, to wrap it up, um, I went ahead and um, let it cool down good. And then I took three final shots and really took my time with the Norma Bond Strike and ended up getting this group here. I was shooting for the bottom of this uh, dot. Um, and this dot being, I believe, an inch and a half. So uh, that puts me about an inch and a half high, which will do for what I'm, I'm not planning on doing any super long range hunting with this. Um, I'm gonna to try to keep my shots under 300 yards for deer, 400 yards for elk. Well, this is with the Norma Bond Strike. I, I labeled that wrong. Oh, and finally, uh, a couple of these shots are with the Federal Fusion 165 grains. Um, 
This one was low, and then I had two off the paper to the right. It was probably about a two to two and a half inch group, probably two inch group. Um, and then I just I, I uh, aimed for the center of this dot and got this shot and didn't even continue shooting the group. Just wasn't very happy with the performance of the Fusion in this rifle, um, which is sad because it's fairly economical ammo, and I've shot really well with other rifles of mine with that ammo in the Fusions. So, um, If you made it this far through the video, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully uh, you learned something about the Ruger M77 Hawkeye that you didn't know before. I think it's an underrated rifle. Um, but I'm very happy to own another one and look forward to being, being able to hunt with it. Please like the video, uh, give it a thumbs up rather, and subscribe to the channel. And we'll be putting out more videos here, hopefully more regularly going forward. Thank you and have a great day.